Today I'm going to be showing you around the stunning yellow course here at Whittlebury Park. I'm going to be showing you how to play the course. I'm going to show you how to play it, the trouble spots, where you want to be hitting the golf ball. First hole on the yellow course here is 390 yards. We've got a bit of trouble left, we've got out of bounds. We've got some deeper stuff just on the right hand side. Fairly generous-ish start, but the problem is we've got bunkers around about 210. Those of you who feel you can carry them, go for it. It is playing a bit into wind. I'm a little bit stiff, haven't had a swing yet, but I'm gonna have a crack with the driver, see if we can get over. Really the first thing we want to do when we get onto the first tee is make sure we're not thinking about your golf swing. You cannot go out there and start thinking about every little thing. You've just got to swing that golf club and just hit that golf ball. It's allowing the club to do the work on the first tee. If you think about anything mechanical, we are absolutely struggling. Bad for first of the day, I guess. Look at the definition. Beautiful. Now it's finished a bit further right than I first thought. Must have just trundled on a little bit. It's a bit drier here. I haven't had a huge amount of rain. I've got a tricky little shot here. I'm going to go under this tree and I've got to go over that tree in front of the green. I've got 130 to the middle of the green now but i've got to go under and then i've got to go over okay so i'm going to have to be aggressive to get over that tree there in the front of the green but i've got to play it on the back of my stance to make sure it misses this tree under here let's give it a blast Shot tracer didn't exactly tell the whole story there. I've got a little bit lucky when I show you where the ball's ended up. It's ended up just pin high to the left of the hole. So I've got myself sort of a 15 footer, 15, 18 footer for a birdie. Now this of the first hole is quite a slopey green. Slopes quite severely from left to right. If I'm on the left half of the green and the hole's on the right, you know that is gonna be downhill. Because the greens are running quite quick and true here at Whittlebury, I'm just going to give this literally a little tap down. Start out, it's a little bit left to right. Again, when we use our feet, we can feel the right foot's a little bit low, which does mean it's a little bit more of a left to right putt. Let's see how it goes. Not bad. Oh, it's a favourite. It's a tap in for a par. After three months, that's 76 days of not being able to get out on the golf course and play. I'm excited to be out here. Of course, conditions are fantastic. Weather's great. What could be better? Started off with a par, as Nessa would say, tidy. We're at the second here on the 1905 course, the yellow course here at Whittlebury. This is one of my favorite holes on the golf course. It's a shortish par four, 288, but there is a sack full of trouble both left and right. The little pond just here on the left, roughly about 150, 160. Big bunker just on the left hand side of the green, big tree right, and a lot of hay over to the right hand side as well. It's playing into a bit of wind. I feel a bit aggressive today. I want to go for the driver been using this X2 hot driver for a number of years now I just love it absolutely love it it's eight and a half degree a little bit lower on the loft but it's just a lovely 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 pear shaped driver I just love looking down on all right here it goes Yeah, 
yeah, I was quite pleased with that. Quite nice and straight, really nice and straight. I don't think it's got there. I don't think I've got the energy to get there, but we'll see. It's great to be out here. I love coming out here. I don't get a huge amount of chance to play. So I'm really busy teaching, which is great, but yeah, I always appreciate the time when I get to come out here and hopefully share a few thoughts about the golf course, hopefully share a few thoughts about how to play the golf course with you guys. So hey, he's on the green. Nice surprise when I walked up here, realizing the ball had hit the green, couldn't quite see it from the tee, a bit low sun, but nice to see you again. Got another 50, about a 15 footer for Eagle here. Fantastic, slightly uphill. Again, want to be aggressive with this. Slightly up here, it's going to be a little bit slower, but make sure we just get it to the hole. Give myself that eagle chance. What did I just say to you? Get the ball to the hole. What have I done? Left it short. Love this hole, it's a bit tricky. Downhill, but it's quite a narrow green as well. We've got trouble left, trouble right as well. It's one of those holes where it's so easy to want to try and control the swing as we come through. But this is one of those holes where we've really got to trust the action, trust your goal swing as it comes into the golf ball. Because if we try and control it, stop it going right, stop it going left, we're going to struggle, we're going to miss the green badly. Got about 179 to the middle of the green. Just gonna hit a little easy six iron down there. And he's playing a little bit downwind, playing a little bit downhill. See how it goes. Commit to the shot. Commit to the shot. And I'm struggling to see it's maybe gone a little bit far, but we'll see where it is down there. It was a pretty good solid strike, swept it off the surface. Let's see where it's gone. I've been using these Callaway Apex Pro irons for a few uh, for a few years now. Really, really nice. I have to say, I was a little bit um, a little bit scared first time I got them. A little bit for the frequency that I play golf, I thought they were going to be a bit of a struggle to hit, a little bit more blade-like, but. Really nice, lovely to look down on. Slightly lighter in the shaft. Dynamic gold, super light. So a little bit lighter than normal dynamic gold. But my word, just feels so nice when you get them out the middle. Don't you just love listening to those birds? If I was to write a book, 101 best things about golf, bird noises will be up there. Please, please, please repair your pitch marks. I found the green. Hole. A little bit further away. We'd always take a step back and assess what the green is doing. Have a look and see where the slopes are going. Have a see where it's front to back, back to front, the slopes are. That will give us a massive indication to where and predict where that board is going. And prediction on a long putt like this is crucial. We need to be able to predict what that ball's going to do. Might not do it, might be the, the best guess, but you're giving yourself a much better chance of getting that putt close. Okay, I'm starting to feel the pressure here. I'm one under after two holes after not playing for a while. And now I've got this snaky little sort of four or five footer for a par as well. Just be confident going up to it. Almost seeing and vision it going into the hole. Come on. I promise you that was one take. Let's crack on to the fourth. Thank you. 
throughout the fourth. Little dog leg to the left, par five. Always try and just tee the ball up, maybe just a little bit on the left side of the tee. Why? Because you just want to miss the fat part of the dog leg itself, just over to the right hand side. We've got more chance of just, especially if you're prone to hooking it, more chance of sort of overdrawing it into the left hand side. So just aim again for the fat part, cut the wrists out of it. Let's find out how we get on. Yeah, quite happy with that. Again, a little bit out the heel end of the golf club. Didn't feel absolutely perfect, but it's down there. I'll take it. Let me know how your golf's going at the weekend. Comment below. Tell me what you shot, if it was bad. Why do you reckon it was bad? Another to add to my list of 101 great things about the game. Freshly mown fairways. Well, there must be a lot of run. It feels like it's probably bounced off a drain or something because I've only got 130 into the hole. It must have bounced off a drain. So I've got a little wedge in my hand then. It's slightly uphill, but we'll just give it a blast. I want to be, again, nice and aggressive with this play. Know how far you hit it. If you don't know how far you hit it, go to your nearest pro to get checked out on a trap man, a GC2, a Foresight Sport, anything. Any, any sort of hold of any launch monitor you possibly can do, a good quality launch monitor, and see how far you are hitting it. Didn't hit it great, wasn't a great shot, it was a little bit thin. Again, I said I wanted to commit, I didn't commit. So the last sort of nine, ten weeks or so has given me a great opportunity to have a good think about things and think about sort of how I can further improve both myself and, and the golfers that I teach as well. And I, I thought a lot of it in sort of looking through, scrolling through social media. There's a lot of sort of almost distrust in a lot of golf pros out there, believe it or not. I know a lot of people have been for lessons and they've been made worse. You always have to look at yourself. You don't blame the golfer. You just look at yourself and think, what can you do better? Everything I usually do, I always ask, what could I do better? Because if they can trust me with their golf game, help them enjoy the game that little bit further, it just makes things a lot, lot easier. Now, as I thought, I'm a little bit short here, short right of the green. It wasn't a great strike and there was a bit of wind as well. A little bit of fair way to get over. It's too long for a putter. The flags, the holes, about roughly about 25 feet on the green. Slopes a little bit left to right. But the most important thing is to make good contact with this golf ball, just to get it up in the air and let the green and gravity take over. Now, gone are the days where we need to keep our hands ahead. Why is that? Because the problem is, when we try and keep our hands ahead to try and strike down on the golf ball, we take the bounce of the golf club out of play. And we end up digging, more often than not, digging the leading edge into the ground, or even worse, we end up blading the golf ball, sculling the golf ball through the green. So we've got to let the bounce do the work. So a couple of things we can do. We can make sure, the, to start with, the shaft is nice and vertical. Not too far forward, not behind, nice and vertical. And I want you to try and allow, when we swing, the feeling of the club just gently passing the hands on the way through. We don't want the hands to lead the way, so otherwise that's going to happen, the big duff, and we don't want that. So we just want to let the club feel like it's doing the work and just gently going past the hand. Let's see how it goes. Not bad. Roughly about five, six feet or so for birdie. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of ground before the ball, but overall, not bad. We've got a tiny bit of left to right here. A little six footer for birdie. Let's see how we get on. To start that ball sort of left edge. Let's go for it. 
Woo. Not bad, not bad. I'm quite happy with that. Some two under after four for first round back for a while. Yeah, it is running a little bit out here, but you still got to do it. So I'm quite pleased with that. Hope this helps. Look out for part two of my series. Comment below, agree, disagree. Hit that subscribe button and that like button. Thanks for watching. Please share with friends, golfing friends, non-golfing friends.